Dr. Amy Beard is one of my favorite people. I love uh, her work and following her. She is in the functional medicine space, but has a huge emphasis on faith. And she's recently coming out with a new tool that is gonna help along the journey. And I'm so happy to share that here. Dr. Beard, so excited to be on here again, visiting with you. Uh, definitely you know, known you for, for a while, uh, followed you for a long time, and you've been a very outspoken uh, functional medicine approach MD, and it's just been uh, amazing. I think that your the the impact you've had is massive and probably way more than you even <laughs> realize, to, to be honest, and just thank you for what you do and not being ashamed of how you believe. So the reason I wanted to jump on here with you is because you've got a new program going that it's such a different twist from what a lot of the health practitioners are doing. And I wanted to give you the opportunity to to share that because I think it's going to be a game changer. Well, that's the goal anyway. And thank you for, for having me on so I could so I could talk about it. Um, the podcast is very different than the first time that we were doing it. Last time you were like in a pantry of sorts. <laughs> I remember now you've gone like big time. And um, so I'm, I'm loving the background that you have. So, yeah, um, we um, and I brought a copy of it. It's called our Live Well. Um, it's a faith based functional medicine guide planner and course for people. Um and my husband and I came up with this idea about probably three years ago because I was having, there were some, we were getting so many patients who were coming to us with a lot of problems and a long list of meds, you know, like a lot of people, right? And they weren't even doing the basics, you know? And so I was like, man, it, if, if people just under, uh, first of all, knew what the, the fundamentals were, and could adhere to them and incorporate them into their lives and do it for a while, a lot of their problems would go away, you know, if not completely, but, you know, re reduce in severity, maybe to the point where they don't even need a functional medicine practice per se, or at least when they get to a functional medicine practice, they can get straight into um, the, the more, it, it would, it would clear the smoke per se. That's what we use that term, clear the smoke from the room. So the functional medicine practitioner can really hone in on what probably is going on because you know, you're know you already eating right. You're managing your stress. You're getting sleep. You're getting activity. You're making sure you're, you're eating clean foods and avoiding toxins. So you're doing all the things that we want you to do as a patient and so that whatever's remaining, we have a much better idea of what might be going on. Too cool. So you've basically embraced what, what you have said for a long time, is self-care is health care. And so you've just given the tools to make it easier and structured without all the, the smoke, as you said, from all the different, you know, the conflicting information. If you get on and Google, what should I eat? I mean, it's just like, my goodness, you get hit from every every different direction, or what should I take? And, uh, you know, I saw, I, never mind, I'm not even go down that one. The, I just saw one <laughs> yesterday that my head is still, still spinning, and this guy has like 3 million followers on Instagram, and I'm just like, this is going to kill people. But anyways, with with the course, how, how does somebody participate in it? And, and what's the difference versus just, you know, watching YouTube videos? So, so what this is, is, you know, this is not, this is not for somebody who is probably doing everything right. It still has a lot, a lot of complicated issues going on. This is really for the people who know, or they're, know they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing on a regular basis, or they're just confused about all of the health information that they're being inundated with on, you know, all the social, social media outlets. Um, it's really for that, those people who, and who also, this is geared towards Christians, right? This is geared towards people of faith because too many times I know, like in the functional medicine world, um, Christ is just left out. It, 
It just is. They talk all around it, right? You know, being intentional, meditating, showing gratitude to I don't know who, but um, this really puts Christ uh, front and center because for me, as you know, even in my own health struggles and in, in, in my professional practice, those who have Christ um, front and center and know that he plays a role in our health do far better. And why, why would they not? Um, God made us. He knows us better than we know ourselves. And we do, and we really, you know, we rely on him guiding us through this process. Everybody's going to be guided in their own way by God through their health journey. And so uh, we want to make sure that that was included in this, along with just giving a lot of valuable information on, on what we call the fundamentals. And that in, we have 20 podcasts that are associated with this planner um, and guide that talk about all, you know, nutrition, the GI microbiome, the HPA axis, sleep, you know, what stress is doing to your body, activity, detoxification, all the, all the big fundamentals that I think people need to have a good grasp on to really start incorporating these things into their life and it becomes their lifestyle, right? And so when they do that and with the tincture of time, a lot of problems go away um, or they result or they improve greatly. And so this just takes you, it, it's a three month course. So every day, and, and there's some pre-work that you have to do, right? You literally, and I'm doing this myself. I'm journaling and planning right along with all of the others who have purchased the planner um, because there's still a little bit of health and spiritual work that I want to do on myself too. So, because uh, you know, recently, you may or not, I was diagnosed with alpha gal allergy. And so that has really <laughs> thrown a wrench into um, my life right now. But, um, so I'm working through that, but there's, when I say pre-work, it's just about you sitting down, thinking about what your health goals are, um, the things that you're doing, and there's um, objective forms where, where you're scoring your symptoms that you have, um, the, the, how well you're doing in the fundamentals, and it's just having you walk through this process of actually thinking about what you want to accomplish what might be your barriers, how you're going to overcome those barriers, what your resources are. And then you, there's places for, you know, to write down your schedules, your meal planning, and then it takes you down day by day. And so every day is a daily devotion. We try to, we try to incorporate a scripture. And then I, and I have my own, um, you know, medical pearls in there and my thoughts on a, a variety of topics every day. And it's just a place for you to document your, your goals, whether or not you hit them, you know, from, you know, whatever, what all of the fundamentals that you're, you might be working on, because, you know, you might be doing good, you not you might be doing well in some of them, but really terrible in others. Um, and so it just gives you a place to document and reflect back on a monthly basis or weekly basis or whether or not you're meeting those goals, you know, and, and so it's just, for me, it offers people a lot of structure and, um, and, you know, and if you don't, if you don't track, I mean, you can't measure what you're not tracking and you can't even, and if you don't even know what you're trying to do, I mean, at some point you've got to write it down and you've got to keep track. And if you just do this on a daily basis, it really does become a journey and you become much more aware of, um, of just the things that are pop are problematic and getting in your way and, and asking God, you know, for his guidance and help all along the way. And so I hope I didn't ramble on too no, much, but that, no, that was great. So packed, you know? that, I, I, I can't wait. I, I've got to, I've got to get one for, for myself and the family too, because where I love what you've done on, it's the structure and the accountability, the self accountability. Like, I mean, it's, if you either do it or don't, it's on, on you, but it's, you can see it. You can judge if you're working on it or not. I love how you've put faith in God right there in the forefront because I think a lot of times we get that so disconnected from health and wellness and and what, what you know prosperity 
from from faith, and it's not. It's not separate. Um, I know that, like when you know Lander was diagnosed with cancer, it could I could have turned away from God or towards God, right? Like I would have much rather it been me facing that than my baby uh, uh, facing this this journey. And so, by having that faith as a focus all the time, I think it helps. It it builds resilience. You know, I remember like the Casting Crown song. Uh, just oh, I, I listened to them and Zach Williams over and over and over and over as we were going through. So just you know, thank you for being you and and putting that right out front. Well, you know, it, it was. It, I've had my own personal health, you know, personal health issues where I was relying upon my own efforts, and it did not turn out well. And I think in the functional medicine world and in healthcare in general, there's a lot, we focus just on our own efforts, what this supplement can do, what this diet can do, what this exercise program can do. Oh, I've got to do this now. I've got to do that. And I think even Christians fall into that trap too. I know I did. It was, it was just, I was, I was trying to overcome health obstacles on my own and it did not work. And so when I, one day, you know, God had to wake me up and things had to get pretty severe in my, in, in my, with, with my health issues. And he was like, no, Amy, you, I, you, I am what you need right now. Okay. Not another supplement or not another diet change. You need me. Let me help you. Let me guide you. And he did. Amazing. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Well, all right. So what what is going to be kind of our big things to do as we go through the book and the journal and the courses on like what what do we focus on first and then what do we focus on not doing as those first right. steps? So the first step when you open up your planner is basically it's just it's setting out your three month goals. Like what are the goals that you want to achieve? And they could be health related. They could be spiritual related. I know when I start peeling back the layers of, of, of my health issues, it comes down to sometimes a lot of spiritual issues, you know, not giving my worry, my, my cares to the Lord, chronic worry and about tomorrow, next week, next year. Um, but they're going to, you're going to sit down and just kind of think, really think about what your goals are and then, um, how you're going to get there. And there are, like I said, many forms to fill out that, that um, where you have objective data. And it's kind of like one of them is a medical symptom questionnaire where you are scoring yourself in various different biological systems and the symptoms that you may be experiencing in each one and then tallying up your score. And then there's another one that's for the fundamentals. It kind of, you score yourself how you're doing in those and then there's a, a, a what we call a wellness wheel. So it, it kind of um, is a way for you to chart your efforts in various different categories, where, whether it's spiritual, creative, hobby outlets, uh, career, uh, self-improvement, uh, just various things that you can, that provide some objective data and you score yourself there. And then it's constantly prompting you to reflect on what you see and and then have you document, okay, here's my goals. How am I going to be successful? What are, what are going to be my pitfalls? What are, what are the resources that I can use to overcome these things through this process? Um, what is my, and it has you make out a schedule so that you can, can get all of this in there. Because, you know, if, I know for me, uh, working from home and owning your own business, sometimes you don't have a schedule like you used to when you work for somebody else. So for me, the structure of having a schedule is actually a huge relief because now I'm like, okay, great. Now I cannot let work creep into my every hour that I'm alive. Now I can, you know, um, and so you you work, you're making a schedule and then um, after that one week schedule and you're planning out your, if you want, you can get as detailed as you want. And, and when I say as detailed as you want, sometimes some people are going to get detail. Uh, I, but I don't want this to stress people out. Yes, there's a lot of documentation, but the last thing we want it to do is add more stress. It's a guide. Okay. It's something for you to track and monitor. And so after you set your three month goals and you kind of work through how you're going to get there and you've made out your schedule for the first week and, uh, then it's just taking it day by day. So the first 30 days are just 
um, you know, you're, there's places to write down the goals that you have, and then you can mark it. Then you know whether or not you hit those goals, whether it is um, sleep, hydration, how what you're eating, how, are you getting outside, sun exposure. I mean, just whatever your goals are, and then at the end of those 30 months, you you reflect on how you did. So you go back and and you kind of there's a place for you to keep track on whether or not you did all of those things and how are and how you're doing and so it's just a way to monitor your progress um but yet walk you through this journey every day of where you are given you know given a a bible verse that there's a lot of bible verses that are very health based there's a lot of health advice in the bible and we were floored when we were going through and when we were making this planner um, and we were trying to find Bible verses that had health tips in them. And th we found stuff on about gut health, mold toxicity in the home. It was just, yes. And it was like, I never knew this was in the Bible. This is so cool. But even back in, in, in the cleanness of your water and how much water you should be drinking. And so um, it was pretty cool. But but, you know, it's it's also every day is a time to just uh, bring God into your health journey. Ask him if there what are things that you, he wants you to focus on, do or not do. And then you make changes to your schedule accordingly. And and I think that's what it uh, is so very valuable is because it's a daily health journey, but it's also a daily journal, a daily journey with God, as it should be, right? Like we a self care Bible him. study. Like, I mean, it, it sounds. I mean, it <laughs> yeah, sounds. It sounds great. It. Uh, it so, really is. with with that, it just kind of makes us reflect and, and dive in and uh, apply these things and track it. Because, and I think you know, one thing that it's we're not able to get into hyper specifics because everybody's journey is going to be different, right? Like everybody, not everybody should eat X, Y, Z and then not do this. So I think that that's that's really interesting and and which makes it broad and, and unique. You you mentioned sunlight, and I know that you're out. Uh, I think you split time between Colorado and Arkansas, but you're outside and you're active. And one thing that I have come across, and I, I don't I don't know what to make of it because it's so far above my head, but is is uh, Doctor Jack Cruz? I don't know how familiar you are with Jack's kind of philosophy, but going with frequency and light and a lot of stuff that seems biblical really um but he's not <laughs> so that that's where yeah. that crossover of my lack of understanding is but when we're talking about like the circadian biology or or the quantum biology is how they refer to it it all seems biblical to me in that it's with the seasons it's with the light it's with nature it's with you know what god made so how do you embrace that light and utilize that in these health protocols so, um, and we do podcasts on this very topic, um, especially sun exposure, nature therapy and things like that. So, you know, we, we are, God created us and to live in this environment of, of nature and being outside, of course, modernity has us all living under fluorescent lighting and temperature controlled rooms with recirculated air and constant distractions with social media, which I think is you know, I understand we have to, you know, we have jobs where we have to work like that and whatever, but we, we do talk about just getting outside, having that sun, sun exposure, not only on your skin, which is doing remarkable things for your body. It's not just about vitamin D. Everybody wants to just uh, make, make sunlight all about vitamin D. No, it is, is doing much more than that. It's just even the, the um, sun exposure on your retinas plays a huge part in like your circadian rhythms. And I mean, I don't know about you, but I know a lot of people who are having sleep problems. I, and it's just, you can tell they're, they're getting less than 20 minutes of sun exposure a day. We were never supposed to live like that. Yeah. When you look at like what, what uh, Dr. Russell Ryder has put out on the melatonin studies, uh, I think he's been studying melatonin for like 60 years. It's, it's crazy. But that the light Melatonin we think of as the sleep hormone, right? But it does so right. much more. It's just unbelievable mm -hmm. what all it actually does. And the yes. the natural melatonin production is so dependent on 
sunlight, the morning sun, the evening sun, not having exposure to all this blue light. So what what advice do you have around that and kind of maybe how do how we simplify this? And, and that can be tough. And we, we work with a lot of patients on this very topic because the blue light exposure is everywhere, right? And so a lot of people don't realize is that, yes, you can get all that wonderful sun all day long, but if you expose your eyes to that blue light in the evening, there, there are certain enzymes that can only that are only active in the dark and they work with melatonin to make melatonin do what it does. So you have to have that darkness for to, to for the circadian rhythms too. And so I just tell people it's like, all right, if put away your let's put just, just put your digital devices to rest at this time, you know, like three hours before bed. Let's just get rid of those. Okay. Trust me, you will know you will catch up in the morning, I assure you. Um, and then maybe let's not try to work in the evenings on our computer if we don't have to. Um, I think most people that's, that's doable. You know, they can, they can put away the computers. Um, and if, if you do have to check emails or, you know, put on the blue blocker glasses, that can help a little bit. Um, and then I, I just tell people to start maybe changing out the bulbs from those, LED bulbs to the incandescents that don't emit so much blue light or maybe just turn them down low and just be very cognizant of all the lights that are on in your home. And I know that's what my, my husband and I do at, at our place is just, I mean, sometimes we, I mean, we'll turn it all off and have like candles or something. I mean, I, I know that's extreme, but that's when we're in Colorado and we're in our Airstream and, and we're just kind of re having a this bedtime routine of where we're calm calm down and just kind of talking and and maybe reading some things to each other reading our bible and and sitting with the dogs and and by candlelight or fire you know a fire or something and i know that's not feasible for everybody but it's just really starting to at least be aware of all this of where the blue light's coming from and just make and just making it a priority to just shut that stuff off especially after the sun sets that's very important. Now I know when we're approaching fall and that <laughs> the sun's going to set really early. So that might may or may not be feasible for some, but you at least need to have a cutoff time for the blue lights. I think at least three hours before you're intending to go to bed. And that also, and we tell people to also be very aware of the lights that are on in your bedroom. You know, the little blue lights from whether it's alarm clocks or uh, electronics that you may have in your room, they always have this little blue light or green light. Cover that up or get rid of it or get get the electronics out of your room altogether because even when your eyelids are closed, your retinas are still picking up on that little bit of light. I think this is one of the most important topics that very few people know are even an issue. I think it's extremely important and probably has the biggest impact on our health at even more so than diet. I, I'm getting to the point that I, I truly believe that. It's like the more we're disconnected from nature, the the way God yes. made it, and we get more in this man-made system, the air conditioners, the artificial lighting, the artificial temperatures, everything that we live is man-made artificially, the worse our health gets. And I think that's not a coincidence. I think that's very much... Uh, just the cause and effect of living the the modern life for you know for better or for worse. One thing that has gotten really uh, my attention is I am ADHD, pretty pretty hardcore, and did not realize it till our mutual dear friend Lisa Fisher said, "Logan, are you ADHD?" And I said, "Well, <laughs> well no, Lisa, how dare you?" And ah, yeah, she was spot on, you know. And so that. That has been something that there is a correlation. Like Chris Palmer wrote Brain Energy. I think it's a phenomenal book. It goes into the diet aspect of it. But light, light. Because I see, now that I see it in myself, I can see it in other people, especially kids, especially my own kids. Yes. And as I've dove into that, light affects the behavior. So I've seen a couple different videos where they take a classroom that has the, you know, the bright blue light versus full spectrum bulbs. And the behavior, just the movement. You know, you got kids fidgeting around under this blue light, and they're calm. Same kids, calm under this full mm -hmm. spectrum. And so going into that, if you will take your iPhone you, or whatever phone, use slow motion video, use it on a light, and then do about four or five seconds, play it back. 
they blink. And they're doing this flashing that you don't see with the naked eye, but when it's in slow motion, you can. And it's it, it's just fascinating. So me being the weird parent that does everything that you were talking about with the <laughs> the red lights and the, the candles at night and all that, yeah, I, I do it. Uh, I'm, I'm guilty. But I, talk, I went to the school, and I talked to them about that, right? Like, this is what's going on, and it matters a whole, a whole lot. Um, so I think I, a lot of our I, behavioral and, and issues. And, of course, the digital things, too, right? It's yeah. the, the, the social media stuff that the kids are using and all those applications that we know have been developed to increase dopamine levels yep. as well. And so, and, the, and oftentimes, dopamine can be very neuro-excitatory, so it's just got everybody in this frenzied state and just agitated at a level I think we just don't even realize. And that explains a lot of the behavior uh, along with, you know, who knows what these kids are eating, you know, <laughs> food does and high fructose corn syrup and everything else and just has them jacked up yeah. so much energy and they, they're just having to sit still and yet everything is telling them to move their body, right? That is such a whole nother rabbit trail. I think it's equally as as important of a conversation, but I just think that we've got to get that message out here that these this light and what we do and don't do and don't expose ourselves matters a lot. I do. I want to hit on the alpha gal because that's something that's popping up a whole lot lately. Uh, we even brought in emu uh, for alpha gal. My sister has it. Um, and so they're raised in Paris. So we're still working on the process, and but I got more of that coming today. But Paris, Arkansas raised emu, and that has been a alternative uh, red meat for people with alpha gal. So what is what is your understanding of alpha gal? Is it is in is it a lifetime thing, or can we overcome it? It it doesn't have to be a lifetime thing. I know, I know many people who um, have had it, and within a year's time, anywhere from a year to five years, it seems to lessen. For some, you know, um, it doesn't. And there's other things that are at play, like your overall histamine levels can um, really mediate the response that you have whenever you are exposed to mammalian products. So if you're very sensitive, you're going to want to lower your overall histamine levels. And that could that could mean you do a lot of things, like make sure, you know, you, you aren't have, living in a dusty, moldy environment. Make sure your gut health is where it needs to be. Um, make sure there's not a lot of uh, toxins that you're being exposed. Anything that's going to drive up histamine levels is going to uh, mediate the severity of your alpha gal symptoms. And that's something that I have recently discovered. Uh, ferment me and fermented foods aren't getting, getting along right now because it, for me, it's just causing histamine rises. So I've had to say goodbye to some of my coconut yogurts and even thing like, even things like miso, tamari, um, and uh, tofu that we've been using as alternatives, you know, because there's not, I can't eat red meat anymore. So we're trying to, those were just not going over well. I could tell that I was responding to the fermented things. And so it, we do, we're seeing a rise in alpha gal. I mean, you could go down a lot of rabbit holes there uh, as to why that, that might be. Um, and so I, I fully expect to be recovered from this, but I do know that anytime you're re-exposed, whether it's a tick bite or a chigger, you can get them from chiggers too, it just is going to increase your risk of prolonging this allergy. I do know people who seem to have um, developed this after getting a tetanus shot as well. Really? Yes. That's, that's, that's interesting. I think that's another thing where we have to just kind of pay attention, and I don't think that we do question enough. Uh, just to kind of right. bring it back to the whole reason we, we're promoting the new the new program that you're doing – why do you feel that it's so important to teach people to understand their own health versus the current model we live in is it's almost like a health dictatorship with doctors. Uh, and you, I know a lot of doctors. I love a lot of doctors. But the, the model is set up that it's a you don't question. This is what you do and don't deviate from what I said or what I say to take. So why do you believe that we should be able to learn about our own health? Well, first of all, you, it, your health issues come down to what you do on a daily basis. Not, not what your doctor does, not what the hospital is telling you to do. It's what you are doing. Almost all of the chronic health issues that are facing us today 
really come down to lifestyle behaviors. I would say about 90% of the issues um, of your of people's health issues is dictated by their by their lifestyle behaviors and their environmental exposures, not their genetics, not their age. Of course, we all have genetic predispositions, but it's really um, what your lifestyle is doing on those genetics that ultimately um, impacts how those genetics are expressed, which is either good or bad, right? And so, you know, as, as a doctor, I know I was cha- trained at um, UAMS in Little Rock, uh, tradition, traditionally trained, trained. Um, and a lot of people don't realize is that we were not taught how to treat at the root cause level, right? This was, this just simply was not taught. We were not taught about things that are causing and mediating chronic diseases. We were taught how to treat symptoms with pills, procedures, and surgeries. That That's our tools, okay? We're taught very little about nutrition, stress. The GI microbiome was never mentioned in medical school, you know, and so it's a shame because um, this is where healing takes place is uncovering and addressing the root causes and mediators of people's chronic issues. And it never comes down to a pharmaceutical deficiency ever. Those are simply masking your symptoms and allowing whatever is really causing those symptoms to continue to brew in the body. And trust me, you're going to start developing other symptoms down the road from whatever is causing that other symptom. And of course, the side effect from the pill that you're taking for it. So, so blood pressure is not um, a lisinopril deficiency? No, no, it's, no, it's not. There are oh. so many things. And it's not, and, that, and it's never just one thing that's causing blood pressure issues. It really depends on, on the person. Like for functional medicine doctors, Yes, you, you've been diagnosed with this, this, and this, but I want to know about you as the person who got this. What are you doing on a daily basis? What are the things that have happened in your past that have, caught, that have led to this? Because it's usually not just one thing. It's a collection of things that have happened over a period of time that eventually the wheels just fall off. Something is a, there's a triggering event and, and then the symptoms start coming on. And so, and, and these things could have been going on since childhood. And I know that was the case with me. That's what we often see is like undiagnosed food sensitivities uh, that were just treated with, you know, that were expressed as chronic ear infections or strep throat. And they just had tons of antibiotics constantly thrown at them. And then lo and behold, you got a kid that's hyperactive now who, who is having trouble with anxiety and depression and, and never was the root cause ever addressed. This parallels uh, almost just kind of scarily how similar it was. With, we just talked to Will Harris, and Will was talking about the con- industrial agriculture model versus the regenerative, and the industrial is very linear in their thinking, and how the uh, regenerative and kind of his, his way of doing things is very cyclical with nature, right? And it's a completely different paradigm, but it seems to be the exact same thing you just described. Yeah, and, and my husband, you know, he he's a farmer, and he when he lived in Eureka Springs, he was managing 600 acres. He had cows, sheep, goats, chickens, ducks, turkeys. He had a commercial greenhouse. He's an engineer, so this was he just loved it. But he would they would say, "Oh, so you're a cattle farmer?" He's like, "No, I'm a soil farmer." Because he's like, "You've got to have good soil to grow good grass." to have good cows, you know, to have healthy cows. And so farming is a lot like that. You just got to keep peeling back the layers to see what the inputs are. If you have good inputs, you're going to have good outputs. And the current, this, this current, you know, huge row crops that we have and just these big, big farming um, practices, there's no, there's no thought about, what we're doing to the land and how that's going to reverberate in our health. We're destroying the land that we need to produce good food because we're just thinking, we're, you know, thinking about profits, profits at all costs. How can we get out the, the fattest cows to get the biggest profits? You know, and that's, that's kind of the thinking. And that's the same thinking with, you know, whether it's corn crops, soybeans, we got to just, uh, you know, that 
to make the seed oils, to, to make the corn syrup, the sweeteners. It's just, um, it's sad to see that this is, this is where we're at. And this is you where I've really kind of struggled with on the how do you categorize this sowing prosperity platform that we have? Because to me, the agriculture, the food, the health, the community, it's not different. I, it is all interwoven and is the same thing. And so that's, you know, that's why we talk to so many different, that you know, specialists or experts in their field because it all comes together uh, and it's all so related. And, and we do stress this a lot in, in, our, in the Live Well Planner about community, um, supporting your local farmers who are trying to do the right things. And, it's, um, and we also do, do some podcasts. You know, we're always co constantly talking about this very topic because it's very important to get back to more of the, the community level when it comes to our, our food and our health. Um, and supporting the people who are trying to do things the right way, because if you don't, they're going to go away and you're all you're going to be left with is just GMO crops and cows that are being fed GMO corn and injected with who knows what growth hormones, antibiotics. And that's what you're going to have. And that's and we don't want that. So um, I know in my in our community back home in Heron is we have several neighbors and we, uh, we all grow different things, right? This, this person's going to grow um, peas and, and corn. This one's going to raise the chickens. We're going to grow this. And we kind of just share with each other. And we just I just tell everybody, just come on over. We're, we're out in Colorado. Come and get whatever's left. And, and so, you know, we have fruit trees and, blue, and tons of blueberry bushes and things that we grow in our raised beds. And, and it's just, it's nice to just be to able to have that community who is growing things the right way and we're sharing with each other. And so, you know, I hope that we can expand that. And we encourage people to do that in their own little neighborhoods. There's no reason you can't have a little small garden um, in the back of your, you know, in the backyard and you grow this and, and the neighbor across the street grows this and somebody else grows that and you just share with each other. You don't have to grow at all. Well, that's the, that's the only way we're going to create a truly, a truly, resilient localized system and and get away from this what we you know call the centralized model that we're currently a part of and break it up and take care of ourselves but i think that's why the health is so important too with what you're you're doing dr beard is that the better we feel the healthier we are the more we can live to make these life changes to make the community better to make our families stronger to do all the things to show up that we're supposed to be doing biblically based off of what you know yeah. god has told us and i just think just and it, and it forces you to get outside and live among nature like we were supposed to be doing in the first place and yes we have to live in modern times i get it there's things that we have to do but i would say if there's just start making some simple changes here and there where you can to just at least get yourself outside Maybe growing a few things, whether just start with some herbs. Let's just start there. Let's get your you know, fingers wet with just some herbs or something. But just start. It's a mindset, right? It's a mindset and a lifestyle. Everybody wants to put functional medicine as this, this specialty that's going to, to get rid of my problems right now. And I'm like, no, it's, it's a lifestyle and a mindset. That's really what it comes down to. It's not just to get rid of your symptoms right now. It's to, it's to make you start doing things that that make you thrive and you never experience those symptoms again because you're do you're living how God intended you to live. I love that. That I love that so much. That is what the the mission is that we're we're doing is make it so that we are so prosperous those things don't exist through this lifestyle. And there's a lot of distractions. Um, <laughs> and, and everybody, and I, and I know this was the case with me. It's like, I just don't have time. I got to do it. Well, there's a lot of distractions out there in this world that are just constantly taking you away from the one who made you and the lifestyle he wants you to live. Um, and that's what I find in my, and, and that is what I found in my life at times. And I certainly see it in my patients all the time 
is um, just this got, got to keep working these ridiculous hours, these night shift hours so I can make more money, so I can buy more stuff. That's not making you any happier and it's making your health worse. So at the end of the day, you know, it's there's some decisions that have to be made. There has to be some introspection, some prayer time with God. Got to get real with God and um, let him show you how he wants you to work, you know, to live and to work through certain, you know, issues that you may have. And he will. Thank you. I think He's that's the like perfect that. The perfect way to end is just the that first step is is let's let's focus let's focus on God. Yes, absolutely. He tells us to right just just focus on me, and everything seems to fall into place after that. Thank you so much for the time. Loved getting to visit with you again. And uh, where where can we go to find the course and more about you? Sure. So. Um, you can purchase the planner and the course on my website, which is just simply amybeardmd.com. And when you purchase that, you'll um, be sent links to, um, to, a, to a program where all the podcasts that are associated with the course are housed. And then a link to the private Facebook group, uh, which is Live Well with Amy Beard MD. So we have this whole community of people who have purchased the planner and the course who are conversing with you, with each other and sharing ideas and supporting one another through this journey. And so you can look for that on Facebook. And of course, follow me on Instagram and uh, Facebook. That's, those are the two main ones that I'm hanging out on. Love it. Love everything that you're doing, my friend. And uh, keep it up. And uh, looking forward to when you're back in Arkansas. Yes, uh, should be next week, I think, when the weather's better. <laughs> okay. It's coming. It's coming. All right, have yeah. a good one. <laughs> Thank you for joining us on Sewing Prosperity. Be sure to follow along across the social media platforms, including YouTube, and be sure to go to SewingProsperity.com. Thank you for listening to the Sewing Prosperity Podcast. We hope that you have learned something new and that you are inspired to adopt regenerative practices in your community. Remember that by working together, we can create a sustainable and abundant future for ourselves and for future generations.